Hello everybody, it's Larry, and in this we're going to begin part three, which is sourcing the tree. So I left the tree at this point, and I left Carter up there like that, uh, simply because, you know, as an example, some people don't have their trees all the way out, and there's some lines you can't find all the way out. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start from here. Now, the assumption at this point is uh, Harold Kennedy, even though, you know, he's older in age, was not born before the 1940 census. But he has his own birth certificate, and it lists the parents' names that he knows. And we have, you know, their names, and their names being Bryant and Phyllis. So we know their information. So we, we kind of want to start uh, with that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Phyllis Redding and just click on Search. Okay, and you notice we don't have the years and stuff in there. But, uh, you know, we can kind of... Uh, estimate some stuff, but we're going to go and look at the census reports. So here's a Phyllis Redding, you know, Oklahoma, 1930, 1920. Uh, there's another one in 1930, but it's there. Uh, so we don't know what year uh, she was born. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start with the 1940 census. That's the last one, and we're not sure if she's alive or not. So we're going to look. Now they lived in southern Oklahoma. So there we go. We've got a Phyllis Kennedy and a Bryant Kennedy. Okay, so we, we were going to want this one. So I'm going to open that in the new tab. I like doing it in the new tab just simply uh, because we can keep it there. So we're going to look in and see if this is our person. It's in Carter County, Oklahoma, which is uh, Ardmore, which is what we expect. And we've got Bryant Kennedy, and we've got Phyllis Kennedy, and we've got a stepson, which is Gary Beard. So uh, Gary evidently was his Phyllis, so we have some kind of relationship. Uh, with Phyllis that perhaps she was married before so we got to keep our eyes out for that but uh, in here it says age 22 and age 25 so uh, this is good information we said uh, we're going to be with Phyllis so age 25 in 1940 so that gives us an approximate birth year for her for 1915 so if we look and go and get her tree again, so we're going to click on trees, and I like to keep the tree open because I like to be able to put data in it. All right, so we have an approximate birth year now of 1915. Now, it could be 1914, uh, but uh, we're going to put 1915. So that'll help us uh, later when we're, we're looking at some stuff. So we've got this census, this 1940 census is for her. So we're going to click Save, and we're going to save the person in the tree. And then we're going to type Phyllis, and then see there's Phyllis Redding, 1915, and because we've got the 1915 there, it's easy. So now we've got the 1940 census uh, ready for her. Uh, the names are the same. <clears throat> it says here about 1915. We're going to go ahead and put uh, 1915, uh, Carter County, and we're just going to save it to the tree right now. Now, another thing I like to do when I get to that point is I also like to do save to computer, <clears throat> and I'll just do, here, we'll go back to it. Uh, Phyllis Redding right here. We want to go to the census form. And we're going to look at that again. So if you do save uh, to computer, <clears throat> you skip the whole verification. See it uh, pops up the window open with or save file. I can save it and then it goes into you know the downloads folder. I like to do the open with. And the open with pops it open like this. And then, uh, you know, just to let you know kind of how I do it, uh, I'll actually drag that over to, um, to my desktop. And so I'll get that, and then you drag that. You can see how the image, you know, looks like. You can, you know, drag it and place it somewhere. And if I have Family Tree Maker open, I can just drag it over to Family Tree. But I like to drag it to the desktop, and then I'll right-click, and I'll do a rename on it. And I'll rename it 1940, because it's the 1940 census, and then Phyllis Redding. And that way, when it gets into Family Tree Maker or it's in that whole list, when I look at it in my sources, you know, sometimes it's trying to use this name that, you know, Ancestry is microfilmed it as. It's right here, this long number down here at the bottom, okay? Uh, rather than it do that, I, I get the name that I want it, which is the 1940 census. All right, so we've got the 1940 census, and that one's done. So we're going to go back here, and, uh, you know, we... Uh, we selected the, the census, just all the censuses here. So that was 1940. So there's another one. And this is 1920 in Carter County. Uh, let's, let's go back. We'll see where 1930 is. 1930, and we're looking for Phyllis. Here we go. 1930. So here's uh, Ira Olga. Because remember in the last one, 
she was 25 so she'd be 15 here so we're looking for a 15 year old thereabouts in 1930. now ancestry if you do the searches through them it will highlight it so that makes it easy to find it used to not do that but see how the one you're on hovers orange and you'll see the the people you're searching for uh, the family group will have a yellow at the top and then you'll have these here so you've got phyllis redding and it says daughter so what that means is over on the previous page there's something so right here it shows that she's 15 which is what we expected and uh, we've double checked we've got you know carter county acres township which is what the other one was and we got uh, Dwayne, betty laverne reba but we got her but we don't have the parents so we're gonna click the back button because see this is all like microfilm right here it's indexed so here's page 15 where they were showing here at the top we're actually going to go to page 14 and they'll be on the bottom of page 14 now see how we've got the green here before and that means that this is part of our search so here's actually some older sisters uh, ethel uh, eloise uh, money and there's olga p which you know in our thing we olga pearl and then this is ira w redding so ira w redding that's the father of the head the wife is olga p olga pearl and then we have uh money eloise ethel and then on this next page at the top uh, we have phyllis reba laverne betty and Dwayne. so this was a treasure trove this had uh five uh kids on this side on this page and we had three more on this side so we have eight children listed here along with the parents of olga and ira so what does this mean well this means that you know the parents olga p okay olga pearl so we're getting a little bit of validation there because our census said olga p so we're we're going to assume now that it's pearl from what we said there and we had ira w and we have it as worth and we also have some estimated years on those two so uh, 44 and 44 in 1930 so that's about 86 85 right in that area and so right here 85 uh, for them and 85 for them so we've got you know some uh, cross uh, check information going right there but the main thing is you know Harold tied the birth certificate to Phyllis from Acres Township in Carter County and then we have Phyllis now in that same location tying with uh, Olga and Ira so again what we're going to do is we would save that and like i said i i'm going to just i click to save the computer just because that's what i do save the computer and you can also save it uh, to that person so save to the person in the tree and uh said no we're going to uh well hold on we're going to go to the next page where they're at because it listed all the names in the page save to person in your tree all right and we're going to type in phyllis illustrating we're gonna save this so this is when she's age 15 and uh, it asks you to confirm that and the reason is is it gives you the opportunity to bring in everybody else but see now on this page we're starting to source Phyllis we've got the 1940 1930 census she's born in 1915 so uh, we want to also get uh, the uh, 1920 census so in order to completely uh, get her done so this time we know we're looking specifically for a 1920 census so we can actually go to the 1920s and click on that so here we got acres carter county oklahoma phyllis redding uh, this is almost assuredly going to be it and we see the father ira we see uh, olga and we see that that one uh, there's money uh, eloise reba so we've got the other children they're all 10 years younger that are on here and so we've got this we're going to save it save the person up oh, at the top one now uh, that's actually kind of new save to phyllis redding so thank you ancestry that's actually new since the last time i was doing this it actually defaulted to the person you were searching for thank you that helps that helps that that i don't know when that came in uh that that helps so now this person was born in 1915 and so we've got the first census that they were alive which was 1920 we got 1930 and 1940 okay and so we don't know the death date but uh, you know we have all of the census information that we can get right here and we do have two confirmations of ira redding and olga 
Olga P. We don't know Olga Pearl or what it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the tree and a dirty working tree and we're going to do the same thing for Bryant. Okay? Because see, we, we don't have the Bryant information. This is her husband. So what I like to do is I like to go to the census and voter list because that's where I'm getting my sources. And at first we're going to assume that he's born about the same time, but we're going to start with the 1940s and work our way back. It, it just seems easier. So here we go, Acres Township. Here's a Bryant Kennedy, probably our fellow. Now you can't just assume it's your fellow. Okay, you have to kind of get some confirming information. Now the first one, the person like in this case, Harold, he knows where they lived, and so he can just look at these and say, yes, I remember Gary. I remember you know these people. So there's the wife, Phyllis. There's Bryant. And, uh, you know, there's Gary. Now, Gary was born in 34. And then when Harold was born uh, after, you know, this 40 census, then uh, he could actually say, yeah, I remember him. So you've got some, you know, confirmation by that person. And even then, you know, you may uh, have to get some more check because people's memories get foggy. But this is a, the first step in sourcing everything. So we go to Bryant Kennedy, we got Phyllis, and so we, we want to save this to Bryant Kennedy. I really like that edition. That, that saves some time. Thank you, Ancestry. <laughs> Typing that in and then picking the person over and over when it was already there, that was kind of a nuisance. So now we've got the 1940 census in there. And uh, so we're going to come back to the uh, pedigree view. And uh, let's go search for Bryant Kennedy again. And it's got the birth date about 1918. I didn't look at that uh, before um, what date it was. So let's go for the 1930 census. And this time we're going to pull out this year. Uh, Lone Grove, Carter County, 1930. Bryant Kennedy. So we're going to look at this. Uh, and there's the Dorsey where uh, evidently uh, he was married, I guess, to Dorsey before. Okay, so Carter Kennedy. Okay, there's Carter. No, Carter was married to Dorsey. Okay. So Bryant was younger. Bryant was 12 years old here. So if he's 12 and 30, it's about 1918. So that's why that one person put about 1918. We're going to change that to 1918. And we've got the adopted son, adopted son, adopted son, adopted son. But remember, it's got Dorsey right here with the age. So that's from her perspective. And how do we know this? Well, uh, we look at her birthplace was Oklahoma. And the son, son and daughter, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. And then all the adopted children, which was from uh, Clifton down to Buddy, they all say Texas uh, there, Texas mother, Texas, or Texas father, Texas mother. Okay, so not there. And the father was Texas. She's from Oklahoma. So this H, you know, the, per the head of household is who's the head of household, but the H was the person who actually gave the information. So uh, Darcy or Dorsey or whatever the enunciation of that name is, that's who gave the information to the census taker who then wrote it down. And so they said that, you know, here's my son, my son, my daughter, and then I have adopted sons here. And that's from her perspective. Okay. So, but the main thing here is we do have a census for Bryant Kennedy. So we're going to save this to Bryant. All right. And we also know that now uh, we're pretty well confirmed that he's 1918. Let's open that tree again in another tab. Uh, I like to keep it uh, separate. So we're going to change that from an about to just 1918. Okay, so 1918. All right, so that's there. And uh, we're going to go back and let's search for him again. And we're going to go back to the census. It says he was born in 1918. We should find a 1920 census. Uh, this is Bryant Kennedy. That's in Bryant or in uh, Fannin County, Texas. But look, we got a Carter Kennedy, which is what we expected in our tree. So when we look over here, we had a Carter and uh, an RV. And over here in this, we have a Carter and an Annie. Remember that one person had an Annie in their tree? This is probably where they got it. And then, so uh, we see uh, Dilbert, Luther, uh, and Clifton. And remember, those were the adopted children's names in the last census. So we know that even though this is in a different state, in a different area, this is probably him. So when we look at a map and we look at Fannin County, Texas, and we look at Ardmore, Oklahoma, we see that they're not that far apart. And we can kind of tell the family story 
that uh, something happened to RV. And so one, now the census said that this was Annie, okay? And so see how it says Annie when it, how you hover over it? But if you look at this real close, you can tell that the that's a V. It's A, and then this part right here is an R, and then this is where you go up and down and over. That's the V and the IE. So they actually did write RV, but the person that uh, did that or the AI that you know did that when they were microfilming it, I can definitely see where they got Annie. Now, if it was Annie, it's A and N has two humps, and this N doesn't have a hump, and you see the dot. So you know that there's an I, so maybe they thought it was A N I E, but they put two N's here. So it's kind of in between an Annie and an RV. But if I looked at that name, my first inclination would not be RV. And so I understand it. And that's why when you're looking for stuff, you don't. Uh, you're going to have to look at the censuses and look at them close because things like this are going to appear. Okay. So now we have Bryant right here, age one year and 11 months. Well, now this is great. So one year and 11 months, we know uh, when this was taken. This was taken January of 1920. So when was he born? Well, he was born February. Okay. So this is great. So we can save this to Bryant Kennedy. And so now we get his 1920 census. We also got some confirmation of his parents right there, Carter and RV. So we know now that this uh, being RV instead of uh, Darcy or Dorsey, we know that that is going to be correct. And on the year here, we know that he was actually born in 1919, and we know that he was born in February. So, or for, excuse me, February 1918. Because he would have been uh, two years old in February of 1920. So two years before that. So we actually know now that he was born in February of 1918. So that helps a lot. Uh, even though you know it didn't change this part, we know that he's born in February 1918. So when we're looking for uh, maybe a gravestone and we see more than one, uh, that definitely will help us out in the future. So now when we go back and we look at Brian Kennedy, uh, he was born in 1918, and we have his 1920, 1930, 1940 census. All right, so now it's time to go to that next level. So we don't know the death dates on, on Bryant and Phyllis, and the censuses aren't going to give us that. So we'll talk about you know how to fill those in uh, later. And those can be a little harder, uh, but you know there's places to find them. Now, since we're on uh, Bryant, you know, let's just go back to him. So... His first census was 1920, and he was age uh, one year, 11 months, and it shows that his father was Carter W., and it says Annie, and, you know, we're probably going to look for Annie at first, uh, so we're just going to go off of the census because we may not have that tree information, you know, like we have here where we already know that it's RV, but we know it's Carter, so we can actually begin to look for Carter Kennedy, so we're going to look for Carter Waterman Kennedy. This one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but looky here. We've got Lone Grove, which you know we found that he was, and right here at the top, it's got us a, a little information. So let's take a look uh, at this. Now, typically, I like to start with the census, but when you get something like this, it's kind of a treasure trove. So the place he lived at, uh, Miles and Miles and L. S. Lone Grove. Uh, there's the mailing address. Uh, name of the people who know your address, Letha Green, part-time employed, uh, doesn't look, well, it says age 56 right here, and it says date of birth, January 13th, 1886, place of birth, Lamar County, Texas, okay, so we go back here, and now you kind of see why I like to always have a tree open, so we'll open a tree in a new window, and uh, so we don't have a, a year for him, we're going to be able to enter that now. So it's January 13th, 1886. Do a quick edit. January 13th, 1886. Okay. And uh, his place of birth was Lamar County, Texas. All right. So that helps us too. So come here and uh, we're going to go back to the edit and do Lamar County, and then Texas is the bottom one. So here we are, we're beginning to, you know, kind of flush out our information there. And, 
let's see, has where he worked at Wilson District. He, so he worked in Wilson, Oklahoma. I know this actually did, to be correct. And so I'd always say go to the next page too. It says here that he was five foot seven, weighed 150 pounds. He was white. He had blue eyes, uh, gray hair, and kind of a ruddy complexion. And uh, if anybody has lived in Oklahoma long enough and knows that if you're old enough, the red clay, you everybody gets kind of a ruddy <laughs> complexion. So we're going to save this to Carter Kennedy. All right, we're going to go back to there. And then uh, now this one's kind of annoying. You know, there is more than one piece to that. So I want to go back. Uh, go to that second page. You gonna let me go to the second page? Yeah, there we go. Uh, five foot seven, blue hair. Uh, saved to someone in my tree, and because this is on a different page, it's gonna make me or it wasn't the page that they linked. So I'm gonna have to put Carter Waterman Kennedy. And so now, when we go to uh, Carter, we should start seeing uh, some sourcing. Okay. So we've got the World War II draft registration card going in there. And now we want to, oh, look at there. We're getting potential mother and fathers. Now, we're going to go ahead and take these simply because it gives us some uh, confirmations, uh, kind of like you would in part two. We didn't get this until we put in some of that other information that we found. So we're going to get this, and then we'll you know flush that out as we go. And so does it give us anything for Josephine and them? Yeah, it's going to give us for all four. All right, so... Uh, again, we didn't get that information until we put in some locations and some, you know, birth dates, and that way it matched other people's trees. Once we started getting that match to other people's trees, then Ancestry was able to say, hey, I, I've got somebody that's like this. Uh, several people have this, and we think that this fits your stuff, and you went to review it. Now, you notice I didn't review it because I didn't want to waste your time because we're going to go back to you know, reviewing stuff for Carter Kennedy. So we're back here on Carter. And, uh, you know, you can see that since I work from that tree, I lose that tree quite a bit. <laughs> so I have to open a tree in another window. All right, so we're coming here. And we want to review the censuses. So now Carter uh, was born again in 1886. And there's not an 1890 census. We're going to look at 1900 through 1940. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, and see there's a 1940 at the top, Carter W. Kennedy, Lone Grove, Oklahoma. So we're going to open this in a new tab so we can come back to this page faster. Carter W. Kennedy. And we've got family members, okay? So let's see what we've got in family members in this one. Uh, we're going to have to zoom in. So we've got Carter, and we've got, uh, see here it looks like Dianica. Uh, let's see what they pick. Uh, and here it says Diancy, and that one actually looks to me to be more like an A. That looks like it goes, uh, you know, goes here and over and then down like that. That looks like an A, Dianica. So I would think that that's Dianica and not Diance. Uh, but the other one said Dorsey, so we don't know. We got Bud, Willie, John, uh, Jared, Edna, Roy, and Carter Jr. Okay. So we come over, where's our tree view? Uh, we got Carter W, okay, which would be with Josephine, and then we have a, a Carter Jr. in 1940. So this Carter actually had a junior, but we don't have, since 1940, Bryant would be 12 here. Let's see if we see the Bryant here. Is Bryant in our list? He would be age 12, and we don't see a Bryant here. So this makes us wonder, okay, is this the right one? And you should, you should be wondering this if you don't see the person that you're looking for right there. So this one has some suspicion in it. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to really need to find that 1920 census. So here's a Carter W, and here's the 1920 census, and we're going to look at this one. So you notice we did not save the other one to our tree yet. We're going to have to get some confirmation of, of what's going on here. Now, what we see is we see uh, a Carter W, and we see R.V. Clifton, Luther, Delbert. So we know that this is the right one, okay? So we got our Bryant in there, and it's the one we had before. So what we're going to save this time, we're going to save it to uh, the Carter. So, all right, so Ancestry decided to uh, take a break right there, uh, but it did add it, so we're good to go there. 
Uh, but we need to find that now the 1930 census, so we've got to find out kind of what happened. Uh, so the 1930 census, uh, come into here. And now this is what's going to really help us. We're going to be looking at these names. You notice I kept the 1940 one open. So let's see what we got here. We got Carter. We got D-A-R-C-E, Darcy. And so the other one was uh, Diana, uh, Dianica, and this one's Dorsey or Darcy, D-A-R-C-E, Darcy. Okay, we got Willie, John, Nancy, Clifton, Delbert, Bryant, and Buddy. And on the other one, uh, we have Roy, Edna, Jared, John, Willie, and Bud. Okay, uh, those don't look to be the same. All right, so we've got some kind of anomaly right there. Uh, Bud V, I don't know what the A, B stands for, maybe somebody can tell me. Uh, Willie's 14, so Willie would have been 4, John would have been 3. These wouldn't have been alive in 1930. So we're really going to be looking specifically now for uh, a Bud, Willie, or a John. Okay, a Bud, Willie, or a John. Uh, well, now there's Willie and there's John. So... Willie is four years and John is three years. So in 40, they would be 14 and 13. So <clears throat> we come over here, there's Willie, 14, and there's John, 13. So it actually is the same one. Now, we knew that it was probably going to be the same one because it was in Carter and Lone Grove. And, you know, we had the strangeness of D-I-A-N-C-E versus D-O-R-C-E or D-A-R-C-E. So we've got some strange names here, but we had a consistency of Carter, and we also had the birth in Texas. We have her birth in Oklahoma. We have Willie and John born in Oklahoma. And then Jared, Edna, Roy, and Carter Jr. were all born in Oklahoma. And this also gives us some information here. So if Carter, you know, uh, was born, he's uh, 11... Uh, months old at the time of the census. So what's the month for the census? Uh, April. So he would be born in May. So we know that Carter Jr. was born in May of 38. So if he's born in May of 38, we know that he was conceived, you know, earlier in 38, you know, towards the beginning. Uh, or excuse me, in uh, 37. He's born in 37. So if he's born in 30 or conceived in 37, that means that he had to marry this Dianica in uh, 37. Okay? So you notice again who gave the information. See the X right here? He's the head of the household, but she's the one that gave information and listed it son, 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 daughter, son, son. Well, the question is where are the kids from RV? Okay? Because they're here at this time. So there's actually going to be, you know, uh, a question, you know, where were they? So that was the 1940 census. Okay, and you don't see them listed there. So what did we have over on Bryant for 1940? Okay, here was the 1940 census. And so we look down and we see Bryant with Phyllis. So we have Bryant Kennedy was married to Phyllis. So he actually left and moved out and was married. He was 22 years old, married and had his own family at that time. All right. So we're kind of filling in some of the family story there, but now we know, uh, you know, that we've got the right person. We've got the right Carter Kennedy. Uh, so we want to add the 1930 census and the 1940 census. So here's the 1930. We're going to save that to Carter. And we've already got, you know, the same thing added to Bryant. And Add them to each one because when you're sourcing it, you want to double check each person. Uh, it's okay if it's the same thing. You don't want to save it to just one person. If you only save it to Bryant and then later you ever have a question, you might get confused and you might not look it up for, for Carter. So it's always important to, you know, to look at that in the perspective of each person. Okay. So now that we don't have the 1990, which would be missing, and now there is some Oklahoma rolls, so we might be able to find them in the Oklahoma rolls there, uh, but we're gonna look now in the night for a 1900 uh, census. So let's come here and uh, do that, and we're gonna do a search, 
and new links. So you notice I right click, search a new link, so I get to keep my tree up. Yeah, like I said, after a while, you start learning all sorts of things to do. So uh, for him, uh, on his uh, profile, we've got now, let's refresh this page because we've brought in some more stuff. We've got 1920, 1930, 1940, a World War II draft registration card. And so we need the 1910 and the 1900 for Carter. Okay, we need 1910 and 1900. And there's a Carter W and 1900. So this will be the one we want. So 1900. And so we come up here, look at that. We see there's Carter W and we get uh, a James. And you notice the age differences right here. We it looks like we're gonna get a mother and not a father at age 15. Okay, so we're gonna have a little difficulty finding that information on uh, him at the time that he was born with a father right here so we've got Amanda J and Kennedy because she was married uh, James Preston Carter W and Sally all right so we're gonna add this one to Carter W and we're gonna look at our tree again and see right here it says Josephine Amanda and our census said Amanda J and we were saying here somebody said that it was McElyay and see here at Lamar County Texas all right so remember when we found Carter Carter was born in Lamar County Texas so that worked out uh, so we do have that information uh, what we're missing now is we're missing what uh, what did we just add to Carter we had the 1900 we're looking for a 1910 so we went to 1910 census 1910 and there's a 1910, uh, we don't see, where's, there's the Amanda J, Grace William C. All right, so let's look at this one again. And uh, so there's William C, spouse Gracie Kennedy. And mother was Amanda Kennedy, okay. So that tells us uh, a little bit. This may not be our, our Carter, but we're finding a little family story out maybe. So we got an, what looks like the same Amanda J. Kennedy. So there's Amanda J. as the head of household, female 66. Now on our uh, previous one, uh, let's see, the Carter Kennedy, where is, do I have his profile up? Yeah. So in this one, we looked at it, how old was she? Didn't say from there. I'm actually going to look inside. All right, so I look inside. Last one said that she was 66, and this one says she was 56. And here it gives the birth years, 1944, so we can, you know, double check that one uh, with her, 1944. So it looks like it could be the same one. You got to be real careful for jumping to that conclusion. Now it's harder for me not to jump to that conclusion because I already know that this is the right one because I've already sourced his stuff before uh, and doing my wife. So there's Gracie and uh, William C. William C. is 24. So William C. is 24. And so how old were the family members in this one? Uh, 24. So it says January of 85. We've got him born in February of 85. So uh, that means that uh, when we did that other one, remember we had put him in this February? Or is that one? No, that was a different one. That was the sun. So January of 85. For... Okay, so it was actually January of, of 85, not 86. So maybe I made that mistake before and y'all caught it, and now I'm just catching it now. <laughs> so we got January of 85, and so I wonder how that happened. We're not going to add that one to that yet because we want to prove our, our uh, we, we want the proofs there. But we know that uh, Amanda was there. And we've got Charles. So let's see if we can get something with Charles and these names. Because remember, we've got these names up here. We've got uh, James R. as a son, Preston, Carter, and Sally to Amanda. And we've got Amanda 
to Carter, but we want to kind of tie this in, but we, we don't know these people yet. And there are, our key here is going to be this James R. Because this is 1900. There's not a 1990. So 10 years ago, that would have been 8, 5, and 6. But he would have been 14. So we're going to be looking now for James R. And that's why it's important to uh, add the all the children to the tree when you add somebody. You know, when you're manually adding or bringing them in. Uh, add in all of the kids to each node. I didn't do that at first. It caused me to work a lot harder. And now that I know better, <laughs> I'm going to uh, advise you the same way. So we're going to look for a James R. And he was born in, let's see, if he's uh, 24 right here, he'd be born in 76. So we're going to try to find James R. in a 1980 census for Carter, for the older Carter. So we're going to look here. We're going to look for the older Carter. We're going to do a search, and we, we really care now about the 1980 census in order to finish sourcing the other one. So we're going to click on the voters or the census reports, and we're looking for the 1880 Lamar County. This looks to be you know the one we want. So we're going to come in here, and we've got the, the ages to look to be uh, about right. So it's got her, uh, there's Josephine A, and we've got Josephine Amanda and the other one had Amanda J, so uh, that could go either way. Uh, let's come back up here, and then we've got Charles Kennedy, and there's a W right here, so Charles W. Kennedy, which that fits Charles W. Kennedy. Okay, I don't know why it keeps jumping me to the middle of the page there. So we're going to be looking now uh, for that James R. So we, James R. And he's going to be about four or five years old. So there's Mary and there's James R at five years old for the son. And so we've got Charles W. Kennedy. And he was 45 years old. He's 10 years older than her. So 44. And he's got 33. So that's about the 10 years difference. And so we know now that that other one was indeed that because we were able to tie that one son in with that it had the right age right location right family members we tied the names and you know for further you know you want to kind of look uh, at the birth okay so the mom uh, man josephine was born in kentucky and our james r right here on this row was born in texas okay so texas and kentucky all right Texas and Kentucky. So we want to go look at that other census that we had a question about, which was uh, this 1910. Was it 1910 or 1900? I think it might have been the 1900. It was 1900. And so we're looking for those. So James R. was born in Texas. And then uh, the mother was born in Kentucky. You got Kentucky, and it says Dad, New York. So we find Dad in New York right here and look at there it's new york it looks almost like uh, ky so because this is kentucky and that's got a y a lot of people just assume that's a y uh, if you hover over it you can see the pop-up new york so we got new york kentucky uh, with the birthplace of texas and living in lamar county uh, texas and then we come over here and we go to james r and we got him born in texas Father, New York, Mother, Kentucky, okay? With the mother being Amanda J. Kennedy, uh, age 56, born in 44. And then we look at that 1980 census. Uh, we've got her at age 35. And notice that this census was taken in July. And uh, this census is taken in June. So we now know that her birthday is right in that area. Because she's 35 in the one and the other. So we can kind of hone in. If you look at those dates, sometimes you'll get the censuses at different types of the times of the year. And you can actually find a birth month for somebody. So that can come in handy when you're looking at find a grave for, you know, their death dates. So we can actually add this one in. We can add that. So we got saved uh, to that Carter. Um, and so that one's saved. And so we can do this one to Charles Waterman Kennedy. Okay. So we've got that one, and for some reason, uh, Ancestry Bart. So <clears throat> we got the Charles W. one sourced, 
and we were able to make that connection, and that's real big because that one's also, you know, a Josephine. And so basically, you're going to do this, uh, and you're going to go and you're going to get every census report while somebody's alive. So we're going to go to RV. RV was 1893, and so we're going to go 1900 through the, she said she died in 1923. So we're going to go 1900, 1910, and 1920. We want those three census reports. So we're going to go to the census, and I want three of them. I want 1900, and it says Amy Drake, Arkansas Little River, uh, 1910. It has uh, RV Drake. It says WH and Dorothy, and this one says WH and DE. So D maybe Dorothy. Uh, Corey, Elmer, Lulu, Amy. Cora, Elma. Okay, so these look to be the same people. So there's uh, probably our 1900, but you know, let's you know, let's try to confirm it. So there's not a 1930, you know, because she wasn't alive in 1930. So uh, in 1920, she would have been married to Kennedy. And so I believe we have her in the Kennedy one. So let's look up uh, Carter Kennedy. Let's go to his profile. So the 1920 one, do we have her in there? Yeah, because remember the RV showed up as Annie in 1920. So we're really looking for the 1910 and 1900 to be new. All right, so there's RV 1910. Uh, let's look in this. So comes here. Open the link, and I'm going to go ahead and open this one in the new one, too. All right. So we've got these two uh, census reports opening. This one's 1900. Let's see what we have. Uh, RV Darder was born in 1893, Arkansas. Uh, father was Mississippi, and mother was Kentucky. Okay. Look at the 1910. Okay. See, this is the second family. And uh, this is the one that, uh, oh, that's the one we just looked at. Yeah. So here we got, this is Amy, but if you zoom in, you can tell that's A-R-V-Y. So that is R-V, that's an interpretation. And this one says, born 1893, Arkansas, Mississippi, Texas. So double check the 1910. That's the one we looked at a while ago. Uh, there's R-V. This is Arkansas, Alabama, Kentucky. And it's got W.H. Drake born in Alabama with his parents born in Alabama. So now we've got an anomaly here. We got Dolly, Kenbuck, Alma, Cora, RV, J.W., and Dorothy, and W.H. All right. So we've got to get some name confirmations here. Uh, Elmer, Corey, Arva, Henry, Lulu and Thomas. So Thomas and Lulu should be three, uh, or that'd be 23, 21. So we're going to be looking here. Elmer would be 11. Uh, Corey would be 15. RV would be 17. All right, let's come over here. Uh, RV 16, Cora 15, Elma 12. And then this Kinbuck uh, doesn't have age on, on those two. So, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, okay, so it says WH in Alabama, and over here, uh, we've got WH, and it has Mississippi, and it has it scratched through, and if you look, uh, you can kind of see almost like an A and an L, but you can't really tell right there, and so, but then when you see the parents, you know, right here, they all say Mississippi and Mother Kentucky. So we've got a discrepancy. We've got Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. And we come over here, and we've got Alabama, 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 Kentucky, and then Alabama and Alabama. So 1910, we've got Dorothy, Kentucky, Alabama, Alabama. And we got uh, uh, Kentucky, 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 and then we've got Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina. So on the surface, those don't look to be the same. So we, we can't source that one yet, okay? And so we'll have to come back to that one. So we're going to go to the next one. And we click on it, and then you can right-click on search. I'll bring your search up in the new tab. 
And so we're going to go back and we're going to go through the, the censuses. Now, you can shortcut it uh, sometimes. Let's go, just go back to this one. Here's somebody that has a tree. And a lot of times they'll have it sourced for you already. So look how good this one is. We've got uh, 1885. And we don't have uh, an 1890. So there's 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940. We got the Find a Grave Index, World War One, World War Two draft information. So this might be a much faster way of, of getting that. So what we're going to do in order to kind of validate our tree, you know, we got uh, Ira Redding. We're looking to see if he is indeed with James. And he was born in uh, 1885. So we're going to look at the 1900 and see if we can kind of make that uh, connection. So in 1900, we got James Redding, Sarah Redding, and there's Ira W. He's 24. Okay. So James M. and Sarah E. Okay. And so when you find a tree like this, uh, you know, there's, you know, some sourcing in 1900, 1910, but it doesn't have the 1860. So we'd want to find the 1860 census. So we're going to just assume that we copied all that information in for Ira. And we're going to look at here and we're going to search for the 1860 census because we want to, to make that connection. So we're going to be looking specifically now for our 1860 census. Now there's 1870, which shows J.F. Redding, and there's you know James M. at age 10. Okay, and so but we want to find the 1860. So come down here and you can click on 1860 when you're looking for a specific year. Uh, there's James M. James M. Sarah Redding, and there's our James Redding. This is James F. at age one. Okay. So we would copy that in and you know go that way. Now, if we go back, uh, this one had another one. So this is the next thing we're going to be looking at. Is that's the find a grave. So find a grave. It's got the records. So and I recommend we. Well, I'm stepping ahead a little bit. Uh, let me go back to the tree. We're going to source all of the people that we can all the way back to here, and we're going to go to the 1850 census. Uh, because, you know, before that, you're not going to get the names except for the head of household. So you can get the head of household's names here, but you're not going to be able to get the children. Uh, here's 1859. So you're going to be able to get these people in 1860 with this person. Okay, so you're going to get uh, Asbury Hood Jolly, 1860. And here we'll just show you that rather than tell you that. So we're looking for Asbury and Mel Mary Melinda with Mary Melinda. And we're looking for an 1860 census. And uh, so we're going to do a search. That one didn't bring up uh, information there. We want to look specifically for 1860. And it might have been in that uh, tree there. Uh, 1860. So we've got an Asbury. We've got a Melinda uh, Jolly. And then there's our Mary M at age one. Now, of course, I'm not just going to grab this like I did right there. But uh, you're going to, as you go backwards and forwards up the tree, as you go up the tree, you're going to be able to start this next person where this one ended up because you're going to end up, uh, like we said, when we get to uh, Ira and we got that uh, uh, search we did for Ira and it brought up that person that had all that information on him. Well, the oldest census is the one that you're going to be able to then match on further back. So you had this 1900 census uh, there and it had Matt and Sally, uh, James M. Because remember, uh, we had somebody in our tree told us that he went by the nickname of Matt, if I remember right. So where's James M? Yeah, James M. Matt Redding. So that's why they put the Matt in there because that's what he went by in the tree information. But as we get there, as we went back, you know, we went 1920s. Uh, Ira Olga, you know, that he was married at that point. 1910, uh, he was with James and Sarah. And 1900, and he was with uh, Matt and Sally. Well, Matt and Sally were James and Sarah, but James went by Matt and uh, Sarah went by Sally. So it was Matt and Sally, and that's how everybody knew him. And so when you go there, you know, birthplace, Alabama, and, uh, you know, you just research back. And once you get these, when you start searching James, you know, you use that information that you get before. Or if you're researching Sarah, uh, you use the information that you had, you know, for the child and move forward. So, uh, once you get that, and we wanted to go to that find a grave, and so right here, it's going to have 
the marker and there'll be a link and it'll have the birth date and death date now this is really good so we got ira w redding and in our tree on uh, ira uh, october 12th and march 22nd and uh, here i don't need these so we, i can close those out so uh, march 22nd and so let's go to find a grave and so right here we can click on this and we can actually get a picture we can actually take this and import this into our documentation notice right here it's got married october 22nd 1910 and that's something we didn't have before so we got the birth and death date for olga and ira uh, this pretty much says o olga and ira <laughs> were readings and that they were married but it also gives us an october 27th 1910 wedding date which is something we didn't have before so olga and ira uh you know we come to the uh, edits and stuff uh, there's a quick edit we don't have the marriage in here let's see where would we put that I'm drawing a blank I don't remember where to put the wedding date uh, let's see family can't remember where to add the wedding to be honest I've always added it in through uh, family tree maker where is the all right so maybe it's the edit relationships Apologize for this. Uh, <laughs> you can tell that uh, these are uh, off the cuff here. So edit. Let's see through relationships. It's not wanting to load up for me here. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna. Oh, yeah, it is. So Olga Pearl spouse doesn't have. Uh, hmm. Doesn't let me enter the date in there. All right, so sources, add web link, add event type. There we go. Marriage. There we go. So we go to event type. That's where it was. So right here, uh, we add the fact, we add the event, we add the marriage, and we add the date. And so the date that it showed was October 27th, 1910. So 10... 27 1910 and we don't know the location but we do know where they were in their life so we're pretty sure that it was right there in either Carter or Tarrant so we know now where to look for a marriage certificate or if we pull up a marriage certificate we know what to look for now the find a grave is a really really uh, handy tool um, so you can find sometimes you find the obituaries and stuff on here uh, on the find a grave so let's go back and look at the tree again and uh, you usually find it when you get a little further back so I think William Henry Drake had one so let's look and see if I can locate William Henry Drake and find a grave so we'll have we'll just leave this pulled up right there so I can refer to it that was 56 through 27 okay click out find a grave so we're gonna do William Henry Drake and then let's go back to the pedigree view William Henry Drake was 1956 through 27 so 1856 1856 probably was saying that wrong <laughs> 1927 all right <clears throat> let's see what we got here William Henry Drake so uh, Atoka County Oklahoma now watch what we get here and find a grave needs to be part of your sourcing materials. This is really, really handy. So we've got family members. We've got John B. Drake, Mary Matilda Goggins Drake. Okay. And so William Drake, John Beverly Drake, Mary M. And so that's going to be Matilda and John Beverly Drake. And over here on, let's close this find a grave so I don't get confused. It says John B. And that would be John Beverly. It says spouse was Dorothy Elizabeth Oglesby. Okay, and so we had here William Drake, Dorothy Elizabeth Oglesby. And so this find a grave is a treasure trove. Not only does it have uh, the tombstones for the dates, look at the here. We've got children listed and we've got their dates. And so we got Lula M. McGowan. So we know that she married a McGowan. And, you know, Sydney, Kim, William, Thomas Drake, and then also siblings. We know that William Drake had John Abraham Sherman and Arvilla, 
So down uh, our Villa Drake. So William Henry Drake uh, had a sister, our Villa, and we saw one of the people documented that this was Arvella, and so RV for short, so that probably so that they could distinguish. So we can now tell that William Henry Drake and his sister uh, right here, our Villa Jane Drake, who married a Robinson, evidently uh, William and her were close. They were, and he named their child Arvi after his sister, or named her Arvella after his sister Arvilla. So we also we now are starting to say, okay, we, we're getting a little of the family information there, and then of course uh, the Arvi or Arvella right here, Arvella Caldonio, nicknamed Arvi, and uh, that was William's sister. And we also get pictures. See right here on John Abraham. We'll I'll just open this in a new window real quick. Uh, we get a picture. We got a John Abraham picture that was put in. And uh, we got the marker. It looks like a, a recently new marker. It looks like the cemetery may have been upgrading. Uh, but a lot of times you'll get uh, obituaries. So when we click on John Beverly Drake, look at this treasure trove of information that we've got here. Okay, John... Uh, and it says maybe Beverly, John B., was the son of William and Martha Drake. Okay, so now uh, John Beverly, we know, was the son of William and Martha, John Beverly. And let's see what we got here. Was it going to be, uh, it says William and then Martha. Okay, so we've kind of got some confirmation of that next level. And, and Margaret Matilda Goggins. Before the Civil War, John Drake enlisted in Terrence uh, Battery Light Artillery of Alabama in Tuscaloosa for the duration of the war. Muster roll here shows he was absent because he was sick on this muster roll. Uh, to the children born to this marriage are number one, William Henry Drake. He married Dorothy Elizabeth Oglesby. Number two, three, uh, Mary Pamelia Atlantic Drake. And so it tells the story here. And then... Uh, you know, here's the spouse, Mary Matilda Goggins, and it kind of tells the story here. Uh, she oh, says she was disinherited. We got a story here. <laughs> uh, family history passed down this information. She was alienated from her family because of her marriage. So, uh, Margaret Matilda or Tilda Goggins Drake, uh, they did not like her evidently marrying uh, and uh, Drake. And so Matilda was allowed to see her mother when she was dying because of the influence of her brothers. She was disinherited, but again, on her, the death of her father, her brothers gave her a portion of the family money and bought a farm near Arkenda, Arkansas. And this is where she died. So now we've got locations, you know, where they went. We've got family story. You know, she married for love, didn't like it for whatever reason. Uh, mother and father disinherited her, or the father may have. Uh, when the mother was dying, the brothers interceded on her behalf, allowed her to see her mother. When the father died, they all chipped in and gave her a portion of the inheritance, which in modern days, uh, no offense to most people today, but most people today are so greedy when they get the inheritance and their parents have disinherited them, they just say, thank you more for me and move on. Uh, I think this really just kind of speaks to the mindset of uh, people at that time. And here, you know, what's really interesting is, you know, John's, uh, John Drake, we don't see his parents at this point. So we really know that this is all being probably updated and kept from the Goggins because look at here, we've got more Goggins. And so here, as we go up to the Goggins, we've got uh, siblings of, and then Abraham Pamelia migrated from, you know, South Carolina. It tells their story. Uh, all the Chickasaw land, which is now Marion County, went on sale on the 6th of October, 1836. So there's a little bit of American history. And the sale lasted for several years, and Abraham Goggins bought three tracts of land. So the 1836, this tells us that the Chickasaw Indian lands, which was now Marion County, uh, this goes into the Indian Removal Act of the 1830s, and it also tells you what happened. It, the land, uh, you know, was... Uh, bought by the government and then it was sold in order to recoup that money it was sold at public sale and it looks like the sale went on uh, for several years 
So it wasn't like, hey, if you want to buy some land here, act at this time. It was put up for sale for several years. And the states back then, it's not like today where all of our states and our government operate on debt because we have you know, these programs we want to implement. Back then, everything was operated. You stayed solvent or you borrowed and you were in debt and you paid it back or you gave away part of your state in order to get it back. Uh, it's not like today where everybody operates on credit. I mean, it's kind of an amazing thing the way you know society has changed. Uh, you know, I was young. I was one of those who hung around my grandparents when you know other people who were you know five years old didn't. They were outside with their other five year olds, and I would talk to them. And uh, it was surprising to me that the whole concept of getting a loan for a house uh, that wasn't even something back then. Uh, you know, as banks began investing and realized that, hey, we can make some money with some of these younger people that, uh, you know, we get them in, in debt on a, on a loan, then uh, we can make some money because a large portion of these people, they're going to pay it back. So back then, you bought a house and you lived in it and then you sold it and added the money you'd saved to buy a bigger house and everything was kind of a cash basis. And there wasn't the loans and stuff at this time. So it says here he bought three tracts of land uh, on, you know, it says July 1940, February 1942, and December 44. So there wasn't like a bank where you could go get a loan and say, hey, I'm going to buy this land. And you pay them off over a period of time between 40 and 44. No, he uh, bought some, saved money, bought some more, saved money, bought some more. And that was uh, real interesting. And my guess there is that had something to do with it. He probably didn't like the fact. You notice the other was the sons. Um, I bet there was something to do with the land and the inheritances that uh, set that whole thing off. But anyway, uh, it's got the uh, spouse, Pramilia Goggins. And remember, we kind of guessed that uh, this might be kept by Goggins. So we have some more information uh, on the Goggins line. And we have another parent. And so we're here, um, parent Harriet Fakes Galbraith, 1795, Seneca County, Ohio, death in Alabama, married at this date. So we got birth, death, marriage, and we've got, you know, a grave marker to confirm the dates. And then, you know, we've got a list of children, you know, with their tombstones. Now, I will give a caveat. Find a grave is starting to become a little bit like ancestor family trees. People want some things to happen like that, and they've uh, figured out that you know the submission and the validation is not necessarily as strong as it should be, and so some people have been able to start creating uh, some fictionalized things uh, at that point, but it's still a really good source, and so. Uh, you know, remember, we've got the uh, death dates, you know, 1836, and we were talking about, you know, how to fill in uh, some of these death dates. Find a grave is a great place to do it. Um, let's do one last check, and let's do our Bryant Kennedy, and let's see if we can pull, a, pull up Bryant. So I actually don't know because I've not done this. Uh, Bryant, I don't think we had a middle name for him, and we had him born in 1918, and... We know it's going to be in Oklahoma. So here we go. Lone Grove, Carter County, Oklahoma. So January 13th, 1918. Okay. Uh, January 13th, I think. Oh, no, we had, we had February. So we're going to get to correct this. Do a quick edit. So we know now for a fact it was January 13th, 1918. And so that 11 slash 12, she put that because he was like a week or two away from turning his birthday, evidently. And then the death date uh, for him, we've got October 4th, 1979. So October 4th, 10, 4, 1, 9, 79. And so now we've got our source for Brian Kennedy, and we would actually take the marker here. And we know that he was a private in the U.S. Army in World War II. Uh, now, one little trick here. If you try to save it here, uh, save image as, sometimes it gets a little uh, wackadoodle. If you want to, you can right-click and say View Image. Then you can actually drag it over to where you want it and that, you know, rather than do. Or you can just always do the Save As. So 
uh, I typically go and I do the right click and view image and then I just drag it onto my desktop and then at that point I rename it and I rename it uh, you know Bryant Kennedy and then space you know gravestone or marker so this gives us the information for Bryant so now we've got some death dates and you notice that it doesn't have the information here a lot of times though you'll find an obituary it's very common nowadays to find the obituary here and so if you're looking and you know you're getting stuck in this area and you're looking for uh, you know who his parents are let's say you have Bryant but you don't have uh, Carter or RV and you really don't know where to look because you know you don't have access to Ancestry's database for the censuses uh, you know you come over here and you can get this information from Bryant now one of the things that uh, you do uh, kind of sidetracked here uh, another trick that I do is click on the cemetery in that name let's go back to that uh, right here uh, underneath the name it has the burial it has the cemetery if you click on the cemetery and you can type in Kennedy and find out what other Kennedys were buried at that same place now remember one of the brothers of Bryant was Clifton so there's Clifton okay and there's no photo so if you're a descendant of Clifton you can actually click on that and I'll open a new link and uh, right here there's a request photo you can click on that and just make you a quick free account and request a photo for that and somebody in that area will most likely help you out and take a photo for that and we've got Royal Roy Daunton Nancy Cleo and Muriel so we don't see RV well we kind of know from our story that RV was in Texas and uh, you know when she died so it's Carter County Oklahoma I'm not sure that she died in Carter County I think she may have died actually in Texas and then he moved to Oklahoma because we saw the census reports uh, for him uh, show the 1920 that he was in Texas uh, actually I meant to go to his tree and go to his profile so let's go back uh, Brian Kennedy no not Brian is oh yeah Bryant was there so it was Carter that was that way so I keep clicking search I mean click profile I'm a doof sorry folks that's what happens when you get stuff real time <laughs> so uh, we come here the 1920 uh, he was still in Fannin Texas and then uh, come here and now he's with uh, Darcy or Dorsey or whatever and he's in Oklahoma so it was as if he was in Texas so when we were looking for you know her she would actually not be there but we also noticed that uh, while he died there he didn't show up in that same cemetery so he isn't in that same cemetery with Clifton and them so let's look up Carter Carter and then Kennedy and then let's look in his birth and death year and that was uh, 1885 and we don't know when he died Carter Waterman Kennedy Wilson Carter Oklahoma and again uh, they got a nice little treasure trove of information thank goodness that <laughs> search panned out because I was winging this part and that would have really been silly to do all this extra and nothing happened so we got Carter Waterman Kennedy. We got the grave marker. We find that he died December 9th, 1964, age uh, 79, in Hewitt Cemetery. And it's complete to add this information in Carter's bio. So basically, they sent it in uh, to add it, and then you know they added it. First wife's R.V. Caledonia Drake, born here, died here. So we got that uh, information. So now we've got uh, uh, R.V.'s uh, R.V.'s death date. Man. RV died January 12th of 23, 1923. Uh, they married on 319-1911. The children born in this marriage were, okay, Delbert is buried in Bowie County, DeKalb, Texas. Okay, so we got a lot of information here, and we've got Dents Pierce Kennedy. So let's see what the, the marker has. And so there we got the Dorsey, we got the Diana Sa, Diana C., and right there we've got Dents. So she went by Dents. Okay. So Dents Kennedy, uh, December 23rd, 01 through 64. Carter, January 13th, 1885 to December 9th, 1964. So that took out all the mystery out of his names. And guess what? We've got a link to his father. And so we've got his father's information. 
And he was buried in Lamar County, Texas, which we would expect, but in Pyle Cemetery. So in Pyle Cemetery, we'd be looking for you know more Kennedys from that family. But we got his spouse, Anna Josephine Kennedy, got some children, okay? And we go to hers, and it's got the same thing. So we've got uh, the markers, and it says uh, GW and AJ Kennedy. So that was, uh, was that GW? Oh, CW. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so CW Kennedy for Charles Waterman Kennedy and Amanda Josephine. So remember before, we had some that said Josephine, some that said Amanda uh, as the first name. Well, here we have AJ, Amanda Josephine Kennedy. So we have her name and we have her uh, death year and then we have you know his information. So uh, we're caught up on, on that. So the birth, Amanda was born in 1844. We don't have her death date, probably because this was a marker that they made together and maybe she you know moved on because remember he died first and then she got older and maybe the family, you know, maybe they didn't know about this. So uh, I'm sure there's a story there and we can flesh that out. So another thing on that you can do on the Carter, just because there's the one uh, draft registration card, uh, there might be more information. There's your World War One, and there's a uh, card of World War Two. It's 56 here, and so birth date July 13th, 1886. July 13th, 88, yeah, 1886. So he actually has a World War One card. So we'll uh, open that in a new link. And so we look at here, we've got his World War I card. And over here, we've got his World War II card, which is the one we looked at before. So uh, on the World War I, it has uh, both of them uh, on the same place. But this is interesting right here. It says Charles Russell Kennedy uh, from Dakota, Texas. Okay, so that was a different Kennedy family. All right. Uh, so, uh, here you have it, uh, was the same, it was like blue eyes, light hair, medium build, uh, height, it was medium height, doesn't have the exact height and weight like the uh, World War II one did, so, anyway, so a good piece of information there. There are a lot of different sources, and then that kind of gets back into the stuff that we had talked about before, search, and you got the card catalogs. You can find a lot of information uh, in there, and you know the ones that had the 1900s. Um, oh, it's 1900, 1890. Uh, we had uh, USA, and then uh, we want to go to Oklahoma because the family was in Oklahoma. So we've got you know genealogical notes, uh, Indian census rolls, you know. There was a Oklahoma County marriage uh, records, and what's interesting to note is Oklahoma County kind of incorporated. It was the state at that point. There's 2.6 million. Uh, it kind of, you know, the, like the Oklahoma City policemen used to have jurisdiction over the entire state. There, the Oklahoma County legal had jurisdiction over the quote the state. And then you have the Oklahoma Indian Territory and Censuses. So if I was looking for this family, you know, 1851 through 1959, uh, there were Oklahoma and Indian Censuses there that I might be able to do. Now, uh, as far as sourcing, you know, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say that uh, we're pretty much done as far as the sourcing on this one. You know, once you go through and you do like this and you get every single census report and world war one world war two all the registration cards get their find the graves and source them to that point now you've got a pretty good idea about that person and then when you do that you're going to have a pretty good idea of the family so what you want to do is you want to start with in this case uh, you know like your home person and work out by generation go this person and here but I mean, that's, the, that's how you want to iron it. You want to iron it from left to right. However, I'm going to tell you that when you work, I typically work, I go up like this and work this line, okay? And then I come back uh, to where I left off right here because I've got this information. So it's easier to start right here and then work up this line. And then 
come down here, work up this line, and then work up that line. And then you'll go and fill in. So I'll do the men, and then I'll come back and drop back to where the woman is and do the woman, and then come back uh, to the next one and do the same thing. Come to the male, go all the way up, drop back to the female on that same male line, go up, and then that's gonna skip this part for right now. Then I'm gonna come here to the female right next to that, come up the male line, and then come up the female's line, and then kind of handle it in that uh, kind of a stripe pattern. So, uh, so I'd come here, and then I'd go here, and then I'd go here, and then I'd drop back this because I've got some of that information already, and I come to the male, and then come to the male, and then at that point, because I have this information, I would come here, go up her line, through the male line, and then I would drop back to the female on that line, and do it like that and so we will have skipped this area you know right here uh, we'll skip this person and the two above we will have skipped this person and the two above same thing here the two above and here and the two and above so then that's what I do once I get that that will have flushed out these lines come here once I fill in those four people that you know next column would be filled out and I will have filled out this common uh, column as well so the reason I do that is because when you're working with those census reports, uh, you know, it contains the information from the parent, and you've also, you, it's fresh on your mind. They're in this location, and they've just, you know, they've got these kids, so you've got the kids' names on their mind, you've got where they're at from their mind, on your mind, and then so it's easier to go and just follow that next person up. So in here, you know, Amanda J. Kennedy, go up to the spouse. Now, this is an exception. I went up through the female once and then to the male and then continued on the male once we got the uh, confirmation because remember uh, he died 1891 she didn't die until 1920 so we were able to you know cross her over into that information because he was born in 85 and then the father died six years later okay so that's how you'd source it out go through get all the census reports get every available census report for that person in your tree okay and it's real important you're going to find a lot of information you're going to find the migratory information and then as you do it also look at people's trees because as you saw in our example there will be people who have documented those for you so uh, you know, you can look directly at the censuses. I, when I'm sourcing, I have a tendency to look at the censuses because people, when they source and they bring them in, sometimes they bring in the wrong census reports or you might see three 1880 censuses. One of them's right, the other two aren't, and they don't know which one, or maybe they found out, but they didn't remove the others. Um, I'm not blaming anybody. I've been guilty of that myself as I've been researching, you know, especially working like this with a dirty tree. So uh, once you do that, once we've figured, gotten all the census reports and we've gotten the find a grave information and we've gotten any of the you know, extra data from you know, an Indian roll or World War I, II, you know, registration cards, Civil War, revolutionary, whatever, uh, now we're ready for the third part, or excuse me, the fourth part. And the fourth part is uh, here, here we have our tree. This is our paper tree. And with our sourcing, we're, we've now been able to ascertain that each one of these nodes is correct. Uh, we've got the genealogical history. You know, if you've got all the census reports and you verified that it is indeed the right person. Now, one last caveat before we go on with that. There will be occasions where there'll be the same husband, same wife, and same child in the same place, especially with some more common names. And... You want to look at them all, and if you're not sure, that's where you see people have brought in more than one. It's a working tree. Bring in them both until you figure it out, and that way you can get rid of the one you don't. But don't make it a public tree or, or, or publish it as fact until you distinguish which one that is, um, or you make some notes on it you know, where it says, hey, you know, this tree, you know, my tree tags, whatever. That's very important, but I have found that when I go back months later, maybe years later, to look at that person, I might not be able to find that other census report. And then I might be tempted to grab the wrong one. So if you find that there's you know, more than one with the same name, I've only 
uh, one time did I ever find that it was so identical that the kids were the same age, the parents were the same age, and the father was in a place, the mother was in a place, and the son was born in a different place. And then in the later census, the son, I was able to distinguish which one it was. And in that case, I did find, and when I was doing the Basie family tree, that I had the only one that was correct. Uh, people had grabbed the other one, and I completely understand why they did. It was very uh, close, same name, same ages, and it's very easy to say, hey, I got it. Uh, double check it. If there's any kind of anomaly, like you saw that one where it said Mississippi and Alabama, don't add it. Don't call it good until you can get some verification that it is that person. Now, just because it's wrong and has maybe the wrong age or year or even the wrong name, because you saw Dents and it was Diana, Diane C-A, and then another one where it was Dorcas, and it was clearly spelled Dorcas on the census. So you got Dorcas, Dents, and Dianica, and all three of those, and the gravestone said Dents. They were the same person. People just had problems when she said it. Maybe she said it different every time. You know, people get nicknames, change nicknames. Just because it doesn't look right doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means you need further clarification. Anyway, I uh, hope this helped you on the sourcing. Uh, I think that if you do your census reports and get every census report for every single person in your tree, you know, of course, you can't get it for those, you know, yourself and stuff because, you know, those censuses are, you know, locked down. But everything from 1940 and before to 1850 so for over a hundred years you can source it with the census reports and get every single one that's available for every single person and that will give you this nice clean documentation of them then look up every one of them and find a grave and see what you can find there and a lot of times you know if you get stuck on a person you go to find a grave you may find siblings uh, of that person or other children look for those trees and you may find that let's say that we were here with this uh, Carter Kennedy and uh, I've got RV and I can't find any information to carry RV back and I can't you know I don't know here well somebody else may have got dents and they have all this information on dents and all this family and they didn't have RV they had Arvella or Arvila because they knew, or maybe they just had A. There was A something. It wasn't. I don't know if it's Arvi or Amanda or Annie. I'm just going to say it was A and A dot. So in their tree, they may have a second marriage to A dot that you did, wouldn't ever see. So by sourcing it out and going to find a grave, you can sometimes find information that can push you back to the, getting more census reports by looking for the family. So source it. Enter all, you know, enter obviously the husband and wife, enter the person you're looking for, and that goes without saying, and enter all of the children, and enter their birth years as you estimate them from the census. That will help you so many ways. If you get stuck, go to find a grave, look up find a grave for every one of those kids and all the parents, and hopefully one of them will have something that ties into, you know, a, a family grouping and maybe some obituaries and that even for more recent you know from 1940 to today uh, like we showed uh, Bryant Bryant died in 1979 and his find a grave uh, gave us his information we didn't know when he died we know he was born in 1918 we didn't know and the only way we could find out was on find a grave so uh, census report find a grave two great resources source that and i tell you what folks if this was <laughs> i know this was long and it got dry at times but uh, it's really important to source it out all the way through but now once we've got this tree we've got this tree here we're going to start seeing how we connect with the dna that's part four is triangulating now these people passed they didn't take dna Okay, Harold took his DNA, and all these people have not taken their DNA. So we're going to show you how to use DNA to prove your connection to these people. That's part four. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Uh, check us out over on Patreon. Uh, if you haven't uh, joined there, we encourage you to do that. It's support uh, that helps keep us going. Uh, also, don't forget to join the Facebook group. Uh, you get kind of a little early access sometimes to some things. Some people... Uh, helped me 
uh, with, I believe it's already come out, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it here. Uh, we've got power clustering scheduled for earlier this week, and hopefully that video is released, <laughs> or you'll, if not, you know what's coming next week. But, uh, you know, I had some people help me and beta test uh, the methodology there and some things I, I try to stay uh, as leading edge as I can, make things easier and faster for everybody. So, you know, if you're on Patreon, you, you know, you get up at the bronze level or higher supporter, you get early access to the videos to try things out before anybody else does. So if you want to be, you know, get a head start on the DNA, uh, you definitely want to be checking us out over on Patreon. So if you haven't subscribed, uh, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification. That way you get notified. Sometimes uh, Google doesn't uh, or YouTube doesn't send out the information like they should. So make sure that you go ahead and click the bell notification. It'll send you an email, let you know, uh, or if you have notifications on your phone, it'll beep you and let you know that we've got a new video out. Uh, and the next one, uh, this one was good. It gives you, you know, a good way to solidify. And remember, in part two, I said, don't worry about the, you know, the accuracy of the tree. We're going to flush that out. And we're going to flush that out by proving every one of these people's connections with censuses and getting their find a grave information, get their obituaries, get their wills, testaments, land deed records, and add all of that to the sourcing. And then the last thing is we're going to verify that these people are actually related to us. <laughs> and in my case... For those of you who don't know my story, I was born Larry Basie, worked on my tree for 30 years, and found out that the entire, in this case, it'd be like the entire top half of the tree, gone. Uh, it was replaced when I found out my father was different in DNA. And then the same thing over here on my mother, uh, my mother's father, that entire section was gone. So the only thing I was left with, if this was me as Harold, was the my mother's mother's line, which was just this last little bit down in this area here. Everything else, DNA. When I show you this part four, 75% of my tree went away when I did the stuff that we're going to do in part four. So, uh, caveat emptor, buyer beware, uh, part four could really change things for you. So, uh, it will be exciting. It will be fun. Uh, it probably be long because we're going to have to do triangulation. And it takes several to do, you know, one person. But uh, you definitely want to be notified when that one comes out. So click subscribe, click the bell notification so that you'll be one of the first. Or if you want to be doing it before anybody else does, um, subscribe over there on Patreon and uh, get up there at the bronze or higher level and you'll be one of the first to see this thing come out. Uh, thank you all and you guys have a great weekend.